And we are back with this week's Orange County Real Estate Beat. My name is Lane. And I am Scott. Hello, 2022. Wow, 2022 is here. And we're going to be talking about real estate news, what's happening this week in real estate. Absolutely. Thanks again for joining us on the Orange County Real Estate Beat. That's right. Okay, so one of the earlier videos we shot a few weeks ago, we talked about what to expect in 2022. And we said, you know, keep an eye on rising interest rates. Yes, sir. Well, rising interest rates are here. Absolutely. As of yesterday, things were crazy. I was talking to my financial advisor and the volatility is off the charts. Lane, give us some perspective, please. Sure. Uh, right now, the average mortgage 30-year interest rate is about 3.75%. A couple days ago, we saw 3.5%. Again, we're shooting this video. Um, you know, It's timely, so it could change every day. But the, the mortgage interest rates, they follow three different factors. Okay, They follow the short-term interest rate set by the Fed. They follow the 10-year treasury, and they also follow the secondary market. So if the Fed's buying these mortgage-backed securities. Yes. Um, okay, so we'll kind of skip over the first one a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so the short-term interest rates set by the Fed, we already know that they're going to be doing it a minimum of four times. We've heard that, and we actually predicted that last video that we shot. And what we're trying to do today is understand how all of these external forces are going to affect mortgage interest rates, the rate that you have to pay when you borrow to buy a home. That's right. Okay, so mortgage interest rates loosely follow the 10-year treasury. Um, in the last five days, it's gone up almost 10%. In the last month, it's gone up almost 30%. So crazy. what does that do to interest rates? Has them. They're going to have to pressure to go Pressure up. to move up. That's right. Pressure to move up. Um, now, one of the things that I was reading in, in today's article as well is they said that um, the Fed's been buying these bonds aggressively. Uh, through the pandemic in order to keep interest rates low, but they're starting to pull out of the mortgage, mortgage backed securities um, faster than expected. Yeah. And so that affects the secondary market. And now when that affects the secondary market, what does that do to interest rates? Exactly. It goes up. Yep. Okay. So there's so far we're seeing up, up, up. There's yep. nothing indicating down. That's exactly right. Now, what I was also reading in this particular article is based on the 10-year treasury, based on the slowdown of the buyback of the mortgage backed securities, Interest rates should actually be a lot higher than where they are right now. So 3.75%, if you're looking at buying a home, like lock in. Absolutely lock, lock in. in. Because if it catches up and, and if mortgage brokers say, you know what, enough's enough, they're, we're yeah. going to put it where they should be, you know, you might see interest rates start to hit the fours again. Absolutely. And Lane, can you explain for us a little bit why you think they should be higher? Because it's very interesting to me. Your research has told me a couple of the reasons why they're actually lower than they actually should be right now. Well, what I was reading are these mortgage brokers, they're skimming their mar margins a little bit. So they're tightening it up the margins to keep interest rates low, to stay competitive so they can still issue these particular loans out. Um, so if it hits the fours mm -hmm. or if, if, you know, a bank is offering a loan at, the, at a 4% rate. Yes. Buyers might slow down. They might not want these loans anymore. But exactly. if they can still offer a rate, even though they might not be making as much of a profit in the yeah. threes, then they're going to be competitive and a lot of people are going to go to them and still get loans from them. Exactly. And I think a lot of these mortgage brokers are understanding, as we've seen, the buyer demand is so high, the inventory has been low. So the number of transactions is way down. So they're all fighting for a smaller piece of the pie, so to speak. So they're willing to drop those profit margins just to go ahead and get the deal. Exactly right. So they're tightening their belts a little bit. But you know what? A 3.75% interest rate is still a really, really good rate historically. I mean, I remember, like, this isn't even that long ago. I think I've owned, my, fir my first house was five years ago or six years ago. I locked in at 4.25% and I was so happy with 4.25%. Absolutely. And I want to lend some context to that too as the elder statesman of the group here because having bought my first condo in 1980 and paid almost 18% for the interest rate. Now, the builder bought it down to 16%, and we thought we were really excited. We've got some stats here, again, to put this in perspective for those buyers today that have not been alive in the last four decades. Because, again, we've got to think in perspective here that anything, you know, really even twice what we're paying right now is not that bad. For example, in the 70s, average interest rate was 8.86%. 80s, 12.7%. 90s, 8.12%. And in the 2000s, 6.29%. So we started to see that trajectory downward once we uh, changed centuries. More so than even than in the 2010s. Oh, I'm sorry. We've got the 2010s, again, down to 4.07. So 10 years ago, we were looking at 4.07. We know probably this year, and if you looked at our show a few weeks ago, 
we predict we're going to be in the mid fours, if not the high fours, by the end of this year. Could be, yeah. I mean, I, I know when the show we shot a few weeks ago, we were thinking, okay, we'll probably be at 4.25% by the end yeah. of the year. But if um, the Fed's not buying back these securities yeah. as quickly, they're pulling out a little bit, if the tenure continues to rise, like it, you might see it hit a little bit yeah. more. Okay, now a question though, let's say you locked in at a rate that was 4%, yes. and then all of a sudden something happened and the rates went down after you locked right. in and back in the threes. So when you are shopping for a home, you wanna ask your mortgage broker if they allow you to float down that rate after you've already locked in. Some mortgage brokers will allow a one-time one. float down. Yeah. Yeah, so that's one thing to, to ask about when you are out there yeah. shopping for a home. Lane's right on. A lot of the mortgage workers will allow that. And I think one watchword that we want to look at now is if we know the rates are rising, but you don't know when exactly you're going to be signing on the dotted line to purchase that home. One is find out what your rate lock period is. In other words, once you decide to go with a mortgage broker and fill out that loan application, your rate is going to be good for a certain period of time. 30, 60 days usually. Second, a very good idea would be to budget yourself and project based on interest rate rise. Give yourself a worst case scenario and say, you know what, what if by the time I close on my escrow based on the advice of your realtor, what that projected time frame looks like, what's the worst case scenario where I think rates could go and look at what that payment's going to be and work your affordability based on that so that there aren't any surprises. Yeah, that sounds really good. And where interest rates are lying today, it's about where they were April 2020. And if you remember in April 2020, the real estate market was still hot. Yeah. So it, where we stand today and where we think we'll stand maybe by the end of the year and where those rates were previously, maybe like a couple of years ago, yeah. it was still a hot market. And when you look at the 2010s, I think you probably bottomed out probably about 2011, 2012. Yeah, yeah. But then you have eight years left in the 2010s, average of 4.07, where it was picking up and it was fueling up uh, pretty much like really quickly. So I really do think that if, if as long as we don't hit that five mark, Yes. You know, and it stays below five. I, I hopefully it stays below five yeah. throughout the rest of the year. I think you're still going to see a strong buyer demand. But right now we're also seeing extremely low inventory. So we can handle the demand even if it slows a little bit. I think that's a good point. And I think as we close out again, I think the great idea, given what Lane has said, is why not just budget yourself? Look and say, if rates were to go to 5% with the amount of money that I think that I want to borrow or we want to borrow, if it's a couple go ahead and look and see what that number is and say, gee, is that something that we could handle? Because if it is, it takes some of the fear out of the process and you're going to be able to move ahead. That's right. In closing, also, Lane, what do you think is our advice for those people that are watching today? What do they need to do to stay informed and to plan for their future the best? They need to subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay informed because we always come out with these relevant, updated news topics. Um, also, f find us on social media too because even though we only have the, these shows coming out once a week, we also have posts going up almost daily. So find us on social, find us on YouTube, subscribe, like, do what you got to do. We love it. That's the best way to say thank you. Also, if you know somebody that's in there, it, you might not be shopping for a home, but you know somebody that is, share this video with them. I think they might find some very, some value there. Excellent, because our passion is to serve and provide value. Thanks so much for watching today.